In one sense, this is a crime scene. Just after 12.30 a.m. on Sunday, gunfire erupted at a neighborhood in South Baltimore, Maryland, called Brooklyn. 30 people were shot. Many of them were critically injured. Two of them died, including a young woman who had recently graduated and was on her way to college. In another sense, this is the scene of a public health crisis and a failure of political will to do anything about the guns that are killing so many people. The mayor of Baltimore, Mayor Brandon Scott, is going to join us live in just a moment. But first, I want you to hear his words for his own city of Baltimore today. This is not just a Baltimore thing. We have to be honest. This is the United States of America. This is our longest standing public health challenge. And we need to focus on gun violence, regardless of where it happens, right? Whether it's in inner city Baltimore, whether it's in suburbia, whether it's in rural America, we have to take this conversation beyond not just me, but all my brother and sister mayors around the country who we have these conversations consistently. It's like we take turns telling each other that we're here to support each other and we know that we're going through. But you're talking about a country where it's easier for a 14-year-old kid to order pieces together to put a gun together and go out and use it in commitments of a crime than it is for me to get cleared in D from CVS. That's what we should be talking about every day in this country. You hear folks say, well, oh, the violence has happened in Democrat-led cities. Well, the guns are coming from Republican-led states, right? But who cares? People are dying in Baltimore, in the United States, and that's what should matter, and that's what we should be acting on every day. Joining us now is Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. Mayor, thank you for being with us tonight. We appreciate you making the time. Uh, what is the latest update you can share with us at this hour? Yeah, thank you for having me, Simone. Uh, what we're still doing, of course, right now, our detectives are working, going through all the, the hours of footage. We're going to look at every second of footage, not just from CCTV, from social media, going out, talking to uh, uh, as many witnesses as possible. When we have, in this case, so many young people, 15 of our victims were under the age of 18. In Maryland, they cannot be uh, talked to by police without their parent uh, permission or a lawyer present, so that elongates that process. And we've also, again, put the full weight of my city government in Brooklyn. I just came from a community meeting where we were talking about how we, uh, it, as our neighborhood stabilization response done from our mayor's office and neighborhood safety engagement, will be there for 45 days. But what we can do working with that community from here on out to make sure that we're wrapping our arms and every single resource is coming to bear. I had the unfortunate uh, tonight having to talk with uh, Elias parents and, and Elias parents, parents tonight to talk to both parents who lost children, one who just graduated from high school and supported be starting college, another who his mom was crying literally right in front of me as I tried to console her because her son uh, used to tutor young people in high school, right? This is what we're talking about uh, dealing with, this mass shooting that happened in our city uh, that was an act carried out, and we know that this is going to be illegal guns when we get to the end of it. More than 200 people are said to have attended uh, the block party, Mayor. How come you don't yet have a suspect identified? Well, listen, that, because this is still fresh. Again, uh, when you have a lot of the victims themselves, who still we still have seven of them in the hospital, right? And we have to get permission to talk to those young people. That's a process that we're going to have to go through, going through that footage, looking to see who was out there, who had weapons. I want to be very clear. We are going to find these people. We're going to hold the people that pulled that gun, that trigger responsible, Simone, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to look at where that gun came from, whether it was traffic into Baltimore, who sold it. We're going to look at manufacturers, at dealers, everyone that plays a part in what happened in this tragedy will be held accountable in every way possible. Police think there were at least three guns uh, involved in this mass shooting. Do you yet know whether the guns were legal? And uh, I know that this has been a, a huge issue for you. Ghost guns, getting them out of circulation, that is what you were alluding to in your remarks in the press conference where you talked about a 14-year-old being able to order pieces to put a gun together. 
Yeah, I think, Simone, we, we don't know uh, yet. Uh, we, we know that there are multiple weapons. We're going to be going back through working with our partners at ATF and making sure that we're seeing exactly uh, what, how many weapons were used, were they used in the cabins of other crimes, which we all, we always get those hits and see that these weapons are, are used in crimes, not just here in Baltimore, but we get guns that were used in crimes in other cities and other states that end up here as well. We do know that ghost guns are a big problem, not just here in Baltimore, but across this country. Of uh, Maryland itself, we banned ghost guns, and guess what? Uh, we banned ghost guns a few years ago, and ghost gun recoveries are down for us here in Baltimore this year. But we still know that guns here uh, tend to come from other states. We recover more weapons, Simone, that come from other states every year than here in Maryland because of Maryland's gun laws. And we have to have that conversation. There should not be. And then you're talking to uh, someone who's the grandson of a pig farmer from North Carolina. I first learned how to shoot my granddaddy's shotgun when I was 10 years old. If folks are owning guns the right way, that's their prerogative, that's their American right. But we're talking about 14, 15 year olds, people that are prohibited from having guns, being able to go on a website, order pieces of a gun together and put it together. And the company knowingly is doing that because they are knowingly going around gun laws and those weapons are being used in cities and towns and areas across this country every day. Congress should ban them right now. That shouldn't even be a discussion with the amount of mass shootings that we had this year, let alone since the first one that everyone talked about in Columbine High School way back in 1999. We need the Congress to get off their butts and get involved in this fight. And it's not just, not just ghost guns. It's how guns are trafficked and illegal guns keep ending up in the hands of people who are pulling triggers and killing people in malls, in churches, at block parties, on streets each and every day. This is America's longest standing public health challenge, and we as a country have not dealt with this issue in its entirety, and it's time that we actually do it. Not Band-Aids. Mm. We have a president who's done so much for this. We have congressional members who've been fighting for this, but we have so many members sitting in Congress who still weigh American guns over American lives, and that's despicable. Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott, on a very busy day for you, sir. We appreciate your time tonight. Thank you.